Silky friends, it is Milkstool here with you for another Idle Heroes video. Happy Friday! A new event is upon us. It is the Mid-Autumn Festival for our friends in China. Uh, I actually don't know when the actual date of the Mid-Autumn Festival is. All I know <laughs> is that it had been, it, it, it was coming because my mother had bought me a lot of mooncakes. You eat a lot of mooncakes during the Mid-Autumn Festival or what the Chinese know as Zhong Qiu Jie. Did I say that right? Zhong Qiu Jie is the name, is the Chinese name for the Mid Autumn Festival. And it's basically, historically, if you're wondering uh, a bit of history now, to celebrate uh, a bountiful harvest um, that farmers had received. And it's been celebrated from way back when. And one of the traditions is to eat mooncake. And if you haven't had mooncake before, Encourage you to go down to your local Chinatown and go find it. But it's effectively... How do I describe it? It's like a very thick and heavy cake. So it's not fluffy, but it's... Hmm, what is it made of? What does it remind me of in the English world? Nothing really. I mean, mooncake, it's kind of like a hard... It's like a harder jelly. That's the best way to describe it. Um... Anyway, <laughs> the festival is on. It's on for two weeks. Uh, and there's a bunch of great stuff that you're going to be able to get for free as a free-to-play player, which I think is super neat. So you're going to be able... Let's 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 review the event now, shall we? So Moonlight Fair, if you, you're you going to be able to get these crystals um, from doing these activities. So one ordinary dice, one ordinary dice. For, so from playing Mi Imps Monopoly, if you spend... Uh, what does it say? One ordinary dice, five starlight orbs. So, I think what that basically means is if you spend your dice on Imps Monopoly, like here, like let's just do it now, for example. We spend that. That's a terrible roll. It's a much better roll. So, we spent two. Uh, you're going to get points from that. So, we got ten points. And so, if each one is worth five points then each dice is worth five points then i think that's wrong that means what 400 dice you can get 400 really all right fair enough well you can get <laughs> up to 2000 uh, of these uh stars from doing 400 rolls i guess and then next week you're going to get be able to get one for one one scroll equals one star uh What's a better deal? So if each dice is worth 150 gems and each scroll is worth 125 gems but you get 5 points from one dice does that mean it's better to buy dice? Wait a minute Let me do the math uh, One dice equals 5 points One scroll equals 1 point uh, but this is 150 gems, and this is 125 gems. So, on... How much does it cost per, per star, then? Oh, fuck, that's terrible value for next week. So, based on that, if you find a use for dice, uh, and you get close to, you know, certain targets, certain chess levels, yeah, fuck that. I'd, I'd, absolutely, <laughs> I'd absolutely spend on the dice this week as opposed to the scrolls, just based on that. Because uh, the math is saying, using the dice approach, it's, unless my math is wrong, which I hope it isn't, it's basically saying it's 30 gems per point, per star, if you do the dice approach, but then if you go with the scrolls, it's 125 gems per point. That doesn't seem right, but it is what it is. Uh, if you spend your any tickets, and that's a lot, like for me, 300 is a lot. I don't even have 300 tickets, but that's basically saying one point per ticket. Gold, you should be able to spend quite quickly. Uh, Spirit, you should be able to spend quite quickly just by upgrading heroes. And then gems. Gems, you can consume 300 gems. Is it 300 or 3,000 gems? 10 gems equals one point. That's even better value. So 10 gems for one point. Here I'm spending 30 gems for one point. 125 gems. Yeah, so this... What the hell? Okay, so <laughs> this is even better value. Anyway... The reality is 10 gems for one point. Um, you're going to be able to spend your gems on a number of different things, right? So you can basically buy, like, for example, more dice, which I'm sure everyone will. Um, 
depending on how they go on the board. Alternatively, uh, especially if you're an early game player and you're figuring out, well, hang on. I'm not going to be able to do a lot of that because it's going to cost me a lot, right? For example, gold is going to cost you a lot. Um, so the thing that you might do uh, when you're spent thinking about how to spend gems rather than spend it on dice, because um, you might, for example, not be able to complete the shelter mission because you don't have all the heroes to replace, you might consider spending your gems rather on dice, uh, rather, rather than spending on dice, spend it on gold. Uh, simply because... And by the way, they've changed hand of minus. <laughs> I remember how it used to be three hits uh, for a certain amount of gold. Now it's just one hit, and then they just multiply this by three, which just is the common sense thing to do. Uh, this hasn't changed. <laughs> they haven't made this any better value. But the other source of... The reason why I'm showing you this is, is because this is the other place where you can get gold, right? And based on um, what it says here, let's say you know, you've know you blown all your gold on just upgrading heroes because you didn't know this event was coming out. You need to get more gold, like a lot of gold. How much gold? Uh, is that 10 million gold? It's a million gold. It's not even that much gold. Or is that 100 million gold? How many zeros? Oh, 1 million gold. So I think you've got to spend, yeah, 300 million gold. You've got to spend like 300 million gold to get there. And that's a lot for some people to acquire over two weeks. So the way to cheat and to also meet your, uh, concurrently meet your, uh, one of the tasks here to get more of these starlight orbs by spending gems is to buy gold, All right? So that's <laughs> that's a little tip for you. Um, and then if you're wondering, well, now I have too much gold. I've spent my gems on gold, so I've met the gem requirement. I'm going to spend, but I have too much gold, and I, 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 you know, I, I can't upgrade anything. I can't use that much gold at once. Well, then you go to the marketplace, and guess what? You can buy a lot of things here for gold. You know, I, I would buy that. I just bought that, so that's you know, I spent. There we go. I spent 150, 100 million gold, uh, and that's <laughs> instantly got me a lot of points, right? And then now you got a lot of spirit. And so, if you're wondering how you get spirit, that's how you get spirit, right? You use the gems to buy gold, and then you use the gold to buy spirit, and then all of a sudden you would have met a lot of the requirements for this. Yes, and you can also use. Can you buy? And I'm, I'm assuming you can, if you're lucky enough, you can go here. You can go to the adventure and you can also possibly... Oh, I got attacked. You could probably buy, if you're lucky, if you get the merchant, you can buy stuff from the merchant and that'll help you spend that, uh, the gems as well. Uh, the other place where if you're trying to struggling to work out where to spend gold because you have so much gold is obviously Aspen Dungeon, right? You wait for your Aspen Dungeon to open, buy some gold stuff there. Um, but most of us are going to hit the gold target just from like, for example, upgrading monsters, upgrading guild tech, just upgrading your heroes. 300 million is not that hard to spend. It is very hard to acquire. And that's why if you're at a pinch, just buy this from hand of minus. But make sure you do the calc. Remember every time you buy gold for gems, that uh, the amount of gold you get per gem lessens over time, right? So buy like, I don't know, two lots every day rather than... Uh, like, see me, I bought already uh, a couple of times, right? Uh, just, to, just to show you what it's doing. Um, but, but buy two lots every day, and then hopefully that's enough to get you to 300 million. If not, uh, if you're lucky like me, because it is two weeks, wait for your uh, monthly card to reset. Wait for these things to reset. And then do broken spaces. That's where that's the other place where you can just get a ton of gold for free. Broken spaces and fusion, right? Mine resets in exactly two days, so... Fuck, I didn't really need to buy more. <laughs> I really I really didn't need to buy more gold for gems. But <laughs> if you're trying to sort of be economical about this, I would just wait for your monthly reset and hopefully it coincides and ha you haven't, you know, you haven't finished some of these quests. Um that's the other place to get gold and spirit if you don't want to spend gems on getting gold and spirit. So that's the first thing. Uh and that's how to get stars. Now we talk about the rewards. So you're going to be actually able, pos it's going to be possible to get the Antlers Cane for free uh, as a free-to-play player without spending any money, which I think is nice. Um, and then you're going to be able to get all this other stuff as well. I mean, I think pretty much everyone is going to go for the Antlers Cane. And it, certainly I am. And the reason why you go for Antlers Cane and not something like the Puppet, as tempting as the Puppet is, right? Um, artifacts are hard to get. Pay-to-win artifacts are hard to get. The You know, the name, pay-to-win, you have to usually pay for it, right? 
This, if you had to get it during a campaign week, is like you have to buy $180 worth of packs, assuming you don't have any universal crystal shards. So uh, it's not, uh, whereas with puppets, right? This food, food just, it comes over time, albeit very slowly. You can wait, but it's not like you can wait it out to get more artifacts. You just, you just can't, right? There's special events like this when they present themselves, you just got to buy it. Uh, and Atlas Kane, if you're wondering, it's really good for PvE right now. And I think that's going to be more and more relevant in terms of, do you need artifacts for PvE? Yes, because Void is all PvE, right? And I think that mode, especially get more COTS or Purple Space Crystals, you're going to need stronger teams and just like much better artifacts that are geared towards that. And I think Antlers, uh, upgraded Antlers, is going to be key to getting to the higher Void Corruption levels. Uh, for Realm's Gate in Void. So, and you know, if you follow me often on my channel, I always say the same thing. Artifacts are enduring, right? They stay around. Whereas heroes, they disappear over time. So artifacts definitely over food, which you can get very slowly over time, over these chests, which as tempting as they are, you're probably going to get be able to get yeah, every hero. And this one, you're probably going to get ticks as well if I look at it. No, no ticks. It's just Rogan. So it's not even Ignis. Um, so, the, or even these shards, right? It's it's kind of a fucking ripoff. So I just, I wouldn't buy anything else unless you couldn't save up crystals, uh, these space crystals or starlight orbs. I don't know why they call them starlight orbs. They're not orb shaped. These are like just starlight crystals or just starlight snowflake things. They're not orbs. Um, but these starlight things, the stars, <laughs> you can't get 1500 and then you're really struggling to work out what to get after. Admittedly, I actually haven't done the analysis. Um, cause just because I assume that everyone's going to get 1500 But leave a comment down below if you're an early game player or a mid-game player and you're going to be struggle to get the necessary amount of Starlights to get the pay-to-win artifact. Um, because then it's, 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 a different, it's a different story, right? There's different values to all of these. Uh, which I haven't bothered calculating. And like I said, if you want to, me to do the <laughs> the other version, the value analysis for these artifacts that aren't the Antlers, I'm happy to do the analysis, right? It's just, I just have to convert all the prizes to the equivalent star amount and then divide it by the number of starlights to tell you which one to buy. I just haven't done that. Like I said, I just simply assume that everyone's going to go for Antlers, right? Mid-autumn check-in. This is just free stuff. This is why the event's so great. So if you hit the check-in button, you just get this every single day. I don't I don't necessarily know if you miss a day, you can come back and collect from the previous day. But if you check in every day, these are decent rewards they're giving away for free. Uh, there's no asymmetric advantage. So because everyone gets it, <laughs> uh, everyone's sort of equally moving up. But hey, look, it's free. It's it's it Because you get it free, it comes down to a question of how you deploy these resources now. Right, and that's where you're going to gain your asymmetric advantage. And if you don't know what asymmetric advantage is, go back to my video where I discuss how to win in this game and what asymmetric advantage is. And in terms of the VIP rewards, uh, so if you buy stuff, uh, every time you buy stuff, obviously you get VIP points. So, for example, if you buy these value packs, it says here, you know, you get these VIP uh, points, which don't really count for anything except this usually. <laughs> this is where it goes but this week when you buy stuff it counts towards all this so as you can see i already bought one thing i basically bought this pack and this pack in itself is just fucking terrible value um relatively speaking but it is good value when you add all the other free shit that you get on top of it and i'm talking about so this pack was 50 dollars, and for 50 dollars you get two and a half thousand xp um which gets you this uh it gets you that is this a limited use to fuse so this skin, used to fuse Ithaqua's limited skin. This cannot be from Universal Skin Shard. So I think this is... Yeah, this is a limited skin. So, again, for those of you who are new to my channel, there are... <laughs> I, we're digressing a bit on, on skins. So skins, the three kinds of skins you can get, right? There are... Basic skins, which have the yellow border, and then there are two kinds of limited skins that you can get, which have the purple border. The first kind of limited skin is one that you can obtain from the chest on Imp's Monopoly. So if you go to Imp's Monopoly and you look at one of the prizes, right, for the stars, like this one, for example, you can get it from here, right, over time. Uh, 
or you can get it from fusing five basic skins, the yellow border skins. The other kind of purple border skin, the other kind of limited skin is an invent limited skin, meaning you can only get that skin once uh, when it's introduced and you can never get it again. That's it, right? So like around Christmas, around Chinese New Year, they typically introduce event limited skins that you can only get once um, and then that's it. So that skin there is not limited. So if you're sort of crying about not being able to get it, you're going to be able to get it later on down the track, either from fusing five basic skins or from Imp's Monopoly when they eventually dump it into there. This skin here, Dragon Maiden, for Ignis, is this mid-autumn limited. So this is an event limited skin, meaning if you want a skin, this skin for Ignis, this is the only time in the game you will ever be able to get this skin for Ignis. They will never introduce it again in any pack, right? So see how it says festival limited skin, cannot be gotten from universal skin shards and you cannot even buy it for feathers. Whereas the other limited skins, you can buy it for feathers. This skin, this is, if you want this sexy skin for Ignis, this is the only time you'll ever be able to buy it. Um, and it's a poor reason to buy this pack. But like I said, the reason why I bought this pack is because of all the extra stuff that you can get from it. So that's a nice segue into discussing the mid-autumn pack as well as the rewards that you can get from this VIP reward section, right? So the mid-autumn pack, it's $50, 5,000 gems, 60 scrolls, 20 dice, which are valued at 150 gems a piece because why? Because if you go to the Monopoly board, um, if you want to buy one, that's how much it's, it costs, right? It's, is it worth that much? It's, it's arguable. Dice are only worth as much as, especially on an incremental basis. If you're thinking about buying dice, it's only worth, the dice is only worth as much as what you think it'll get you to in terms of the next chest, right? So for example, if you landed at 200 stars and you figure out, well, should I buy another like 15 stars a dice to get me to 230, the 230 chest? Because the rule of thumb that I use is one dice is worth about two stars on the Monopoly board, right? To be just to be like, that's the safest number to use. I used to use three and I got fucked over, but two is the best number to use. So then if you, let's say you ended up on 200 stars at the end of the whole game and you're trying to work out whether or not you should buy another 15 dice to get to um, 230. So then the question is, like, no, 15 times 150 is like uh, 2,250. Is that what it is? Yeah, 2,250. So then you're asking well, self, well, is it worth spending 2,250 gems on 15 dice to get this next chest, right? Then you got to, well, the next step after that is to work out how much each of these bits uh, in the chest are worth, the most valuable thing. And so here, this 50,000 pink dust is worth 6,000 gems. If you were to buy it from the marketplace today, right? So then the math is obvious, right? 6,000 minus 2,250 gives you a, a profit of 3,750 gems. So yes, in that instance, you should buy it. However, however, um, let's say for example, and this is an extreme example. <laughs> Let's say, I don't know, uh, you got to 200 and then you had an opportunity to buy another 10 dice and you just, you're trying to roll the luck, roll your luck to see if you can get to 230 just based on 10 dice. If you don't get to 230 and you've just, you know, wasted all that, then you've wasted that 10 dice. Um, in which case, those 10 dice times 150 gems, 1,500 gems, it's worth nothing, right? Because you didn't manage to get to the next chest reward level. And that's why this 150, it's just the nominal value. It's not actual value. The value of the actual dice is not 150 gems. It's what it gets you. But to buy it, it's 150. And so we have to put a number in there. That's the number I put in there. Uh, so then the other thing you get with the mid autumn package, like I said, it's the festival limited skin and based on past calculations, that's worth about 1,875 gems. Uh, and so in aggregate, you get about 17,300 gems from that pack, which works out to be about $348 per dollar spent, or 348 gems, sorry, per dollar spent. And that's, that's not that great value. Like if you look historically at the stuff that you could buy those special packs, like for example, the Trans Transcendent Expansion Pack from last week, or the which was terrible value. But let's look at an example for the le from. Let's excuse me. Let's look for example at the Legion Pack, which you could buy two weeks ago, or the Puppet Pack a couple of weeks ago. Or the you know those packs um, 
were going to give you just way more value in aggregate on average. They were giving you 676 gems per dollar spent, right? So, you know, if you look at the last, I don't know, five things you could buy, um, those spe special packs, the average, uh, and you probably can't see it, the average gems per dollar spent is like 421. So by itself, by itself, that mid-autumn package where it says 348, it's terrible value, right? Especially if you look at historically in the past and take the average of the gems you can get per dollar, it's around the 400 mark. Where this mid-autumn package actually makes sense and where it starts to be valuable is if you start including the VIP rewards that you get, right? So here, uh, no, here. So if I include all the free shit that you get from buying that pack, all of a sudden, when you redo the numbers, it becomes $529, sorry, 529 gems per dollar spent. So if you include the fact that you get all these prizes as well along the way for buying that $50 pack, then that pack, including the stuff that you get, becomes worth it, right? And so that's the, that's the, that's the messed up thing about it, right? It's, it's they're encouraging you to buy things that you might not normally buy. In an average week, I would say, don't buy this pack. But because they've included this VIP stuff, they're just making you buy things that you would normally buy, which is super dangerous, right? Super dangerous. Um, and that's why, look, rather than buy this pack, which is terrible value, if you want more value or better value, you're far better off, for example, buying um, none of these because these are all terrible. Uh, oh, I mean, they do give you stars. So that's the, that's the fucked up thing about it. Um, but you might consider buying more monthly cards, right? Because monthly cards, these privileged cards are the best value. So you might, I, and I know a lot of people already have a year's worth of pri month, uh, privilege cards because uh, a couple of events ago, they gave you rewards for spending money again, like lots of money. And so everyone just bought the best value thing out there, which was the senior privilege card. Everyone has over 200 days worth of <laughs> this. But on the off chance that you don't, consider buying um, one or two of these. Uh, and if your monthly reset is about to happen, consider buying one of those. That's 10 bucks already, right? And very quickly, you can get to the $50 spend threshold um, and get all those extra rewards as well without necessarily having to buy, for example, this pack, which is just terrible value by itself, by itself, right? I The reason why I didn't go down the path of just buying more privilege cards like these monthly cards as because these are the best value things you can get in the games simply because I don't know if I'm going to be around for another year, like two years. I'm, I'm you're effectively locking yourself into this game for two years or me. If I just buy more of these cards, like as, as it stands, 259 days, I'm like, yeah, I'll probably play for another 259 days. Not guaranteed, but we will see. Uh, so that's the other thing to, to note. Like there's a lot of ways to spend 50 bucks to get, um, these different VIP reward levels. And yeah, that's, I, I encourage you to just play around with the right combination to get to the level of spend that you're comfortable with. Um, and for those of you who have a lot of money to spend, I would say the optimal level of spend over this two week period is to buy um, up to the $200 level mark. Because at the $200 level mark, so if you look at the different VIP reward tiers, uh, and then what it is by itself for that tier, gems per dollar spent, right? It goes all the way up. Uh, and this 87 is is a bit underinflated because here I've said artifacts are worth four and a half thousand gems, which they're not. They're worth about 20,000 gems. So when we plug that number in, you know, it's, it's, it's worth it up to a point. And then the value sort of just declines as you get to the 25,000 reward VIP level. Just just to be clear, right? You have to spend $500 to get all the way to the end. But in terms of uh, value per dollar spent or gems per dollar spent, it kind of peaks out at the $200 level mark where it says VIP reward 10,000. So to get this that, that threshold, to get this level, you have to spend $200, right? In aggregate over two weeks, which is a lot of money. Um, but that at that point, that's where value peaks. After that, after that, to get from VIP 10,000 to VIP 17,500, you have to spend another 150 bucks. And for that 150 bucks, what you get in return 
isn't that great, right? And then to, if you spend another 150 bucks, um, you're going to get the final chest, artifact chest. And the value just basically diminishes after VIP level 10,000. So that's if you want to spend more than 200 bucks, let alone 50 bucks, right? So in my mind, if you're kind of like a cheapskate spender and you want to spend a bit because it's good value over this two weeks, spend up to the $50. I think the $50 is the sweet spot level where you're going to get enough good stuff. If you have a bit more cash to blow, then I would say $200 is like the sweet spot level where you should spend up to, right? Because after that, the value just diminishes. And in terms of just working out what to spend, I would say when they've finally released, I would wait until Thursday night. And the reason why I would wait until Thursday night before I spend any money is because you want to see what next week's special package is. Because I think it's going to be much better value than this, right? It could be phenomenal value, right? It could be like the Legion Pack last time. So the Legion Pack, which last time accompanied um, where, where you got the the, the nice, uh, whatchamacallit, Rogan skin and the artifact shot. That was actually phenomenal value. Right, so I would wait until Thursday night when they release the details of the Scrolls event for next week and just to see what they're offering. Because because you might go, ooh, that's that's much better value. Like, so, for example, if everyone waited just one week, if they avoided, they obviously released the packs, the Transcendent packs for Void last week. If everyone waited until this week, right, and spent the $2,000 this week, they would have got uh, a, a Void Seer and they would, all, they would have also got all this free stuff there is no advantage in spending early like keep the option give yourself the option to see what's just available next week before you commit to spending any money at all so i would went to thursday night see what next week's package is before you decide to spend um and so that is the mid-autumn package i know that was a lot to take in but because there's just so much to analyze this week. It's I I I I I understand that I, ne I haven't necessarily analyzed everything, uh, and I'm probably have to do a part two video because, like I said, I've just assumed everyone's going to go for Atlas, and that may not be the case. Um, because I recognize there are early game players and free to play players as well that are like, oh, I'm not going to be able to get everything. The other thing that I haven't done, which I'll do in the part two video, is obviously um. The dynamics for these packs change as well because now you get these. You're going to be able to get these starlight orbs, um, which is an additional price, and it makes some. It may make some of these packs worth it. I doubt it, but you just never know. So that's the event for this week. I mean, I can talk a bit about shelter. I mean, they're all assassins, so they're quite nice. <laughs> so definitely get all them. Get all these assassins out, except for the light dark, if you can, because it gives you more dice, and you need to spend dice to get the starlight orbs this week um and that's one of the free ways to get it uh what else can i tell you idol sweet house has finished which is nice i'm gonna get orbs i usually don't i usually well for me end game players don't usually need orbs you usually need scrolls because orbs um give you they just give you more food they don't necessarily give you copies right and if you're an end game player like me, you have a ton of food or, you, or enough E5 heroes that you can just replace the old ones with the new ones. So then it becomes more about more. The game becomes more about getting copies, and that's when you need scrolls. But because profit orbs now give you copies, like especially, uh, albeit two to three months uh, lagging scrolls, right? Like uh, the, the reality is, profit orbs they're gonna they're giving you copies of pretty decent heroes two to three months later on right so we just had rogan um the next one's gonna be ignis and the one after that is gonna be ticks right and also black friday's coming up so black friday for the past few years the event currency has been profit orbs uh and so if you haven't saved up your profit orbs or you've used them for rogan then this is the other way to get more profit orbs uh so what am i on i'm on 206 i need another 114 to get to 320 which is four loops for black friday and i think i should be able to get there so that is the moonlight festival that is idler sweet house and my advice on what you should spend it on especially leading up to uh black friday and even just knowing that ticks is coming up because ticks is a hero now that I've seen the videos on him. Tix is just critical for Aspen Dungeon and it's also critical for Seal Land. And unfortunately, 
you need to finish those PVE events to get to really high level void corruption level on void. Um, so yeah, that is that. So that's pretty much the video. Let's look at next week. So next week, don't know what that is. So they're not introducing a hero. They must be introducing like just a bunch of heroes that you can get. But Heroic Exchange next week is like phenomenal. I'm so glad I saved my uh, Soul Stones. Because I can get a Rogan copy and a Russell copy. Um, and I've been saving those. Like I just purposely have been saving up. So I've got like 14,000. I should be able to get both those heroes next week. And if I can't, I'm going to be very, very upset. Uh, so that is next. What else is on next week? Powers of Attorney, standard stuff, Powers of Crystal, standard stuff, standard stuff. But this is exciting, right? Rogan and Russell next week. That is huge. Those are like must have heroes, especially if you don't already have one. Uh, so I can't wait for that to drop. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. If you want to stick around, I'm just going to do my Imps Monopoly just to show you <laughs> what I get, don't get. Uh, I am also going to do, finally, my... If I summon out... Where are we? All my four-star stuff. I can do my... I can get my heroes from Shelter Mission. So, see ya. Uh, one, two, three, four. So, you need Roy, who's the only assassin, I think. And then I just got to sacrifice any one of these heroes. Boom, so we're done. Yes, thank you very much. Then Ithaqua, which is huge because I'm trying to build an Ithaqua now. You need this Bone Carver dude. Uh, and I need to pick any one of these five-star heroes. That's huge. So Ithaqua, now I have five copies. I need four more copies to E5 her. And so I think, like I said, because PvE is going to be so important in Void. I think, my personal opinion, I think I need to build an Ithaqua. Uh, and I think I need to build a Heart Watcher to E5 as well. So Heart Watcher, one, two, three, four, five. So these are the heroes that you can use. And then we can sacrifice, uh, we can sacrifice the bear, submit. Nakia is like neither here or there, but ooh, I don't have enough Akshas. So if you don't have enough four-star heroes, what you do is you should just basically wait until you get enough. Um, and she's pretty hard to get, but if you can't wait, this is the cheap way to do it. And I don't necessarily recommend you use branches for this, but what else are you going to use branches for, right? You can either waste it on trying to get a copy or you can waste it here trying to get um, <laughs> the right four-star hero to complete shelter missions. So if you do that, I've only got four shots. I'm probably not going to get it. Now, come on. Aksha. Yeah, there we go. We got one. So I need to get three more. So over the course of two weeks, I should, one week hopefully, I should be able to get the final copy of that lady. I can't believe she's so hard to get. I summoned out a lot of... Uh, whatchamacallits. I summoned out a lot of shards four star shards and for me to still not be able to get her that kind of sucks yeah oh that's gonna be a that's gonna be painful to get there's no there, and there's no other way to else to get this this hero um actually i have not done my seal land for today so if i do this and then I do that. And then I kind of go to my bag. Hopefully, I just need one more copy. Please, please, please. No luck. Uh, oh, I've still got a ton of in the bag. I'm sure I'm going to be able to get one. Let's just do the Monopoly. God damn it. Um, I never have much luck with Monopoly. See, and... I hate, hate this tarot card house. I get the worst luck here. Your next one will make you move backwards, see? And I'm going to get a six. I just know it. I'm going to get a six. Five. There we go. <laughs> I know all of you are like, well, hang on, Milk Still, You got a dice. That's, that's still pretty good. But watch. This extra dice, this next dice, is going to be worth one. 
Now, like I said, this 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 house of like tarot cards, it's I refer to it as the house of horrors because I just never get anything good from it. Um, and so here, this is actually a terrible start to the game because you want to land on these mushroom huts as quickly as possible just to upgrade them. Uh, and similarly, you want to get a lucky dice as quickly as you can. Because the lucky dice confers significant uh, advantage. It gives you by, like basically a couple of extra stars because with the lucky dice, if you don't already know, is um, if you land like anywhere up to six squares before this dice, you use the lucky dice to get the lucky dice and you basically get to skip past these squares for free. Um, and that's just free movement. Free movement is so critical in this game. Because it, 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 if you can move a couple of squares for free, uh, it lets you move further up here for free as well. See, these are low numbers. Um, which is bad. But it's good that we've landed on these dice. Uh, sorry, the mushroom huts. Again, just a land them. Yeah, these are just... It's the main thing about this tarot cards. I don't mind the good cards. It's the bad cards that really fuck you over. Um, and I hate that. So we're going to get lucky here. Probably not. No, nope. missed out by one. See, usually by now I've got a lucky dice, but this time I haven't. And that really, really bugs me. There we go. Upgraded the HUD again, which is great. Now we're going to get lucky. Come on, three. Yes. So we got a lucky dice. So that's really, really good. One. And so if you end up buying that mid-autumn pack, don't buy any dice from here until you know what your star is on, on after you used all your uh, dice on Thursday. Because like I said, the value of the dice is only as good as what that, buying the, that amount, a certain amount of dice will get you in terms of the next chest level, right? You don't want to just buy dice like all the dice now and then end up on like i don't know 228 and just be too short it's just going to be a waste of you buying spending gems on buying those dice you can use your gems just to buy so many other things and we're going to go backwards aren't we negative one don't do a star yeah okay good see th th that tarot hut it shits me to tears i just really hate it because all the time i get on it i land on something shit um and so now you see we are one two three four before the lucky star star hut so we want to spend, roll the dice. We want to get one, two, three, four. Just so we get on the lucky dice hut and then we get another lucky dice, right? That's the lucky dice strategy. These are low numbers. These are very low numbers. Again, let's pick the same one. Doubled. Okay, great. So <laughs> what's two times one? 10. That is phenomenal roll. I think that'll get me to this star hut. No. Oh, I got another lucky dice. So that's really good luck. So we end up having some pretty phenomenal luck. Hopefully we can get to 260 this week. Usually I finish around the 200 mark, somewhere below the 200 mark, and I'll buy extra dice to get to 230. Um, but yeah, guys, that's the video for this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, I will do a part two for the free to play sort of early game players because i recognize there's a decent size of you that watch this video about which which <laughs> which which of these things to buy with your stars hope you have a great weekend and stay safe